Are you seeking for a reliable meditation technique and a teacher that can lead you toward the full liberation from all the suffering? Then please watch this video until the end. In this video, I'll explain all the important theories and techniques of serious meditation, which were realized by my direct practice, research, and teaching experience since last 35 years. At the moment, it is also being practiced every day at early in the morning from 5 to 7 a.m. through June by the serious meditators more than three years continuously. According to our preserved history, at the moment, the 11th 100 day early morning meditation program is going on. Especially the eight groups of people listed here should watch with special interest because they are the main target audience of this channel. Let's start right now. Hello, my name is Jae Chang Kim, a meditation teacher who will guide you with the scientific Vipassana meditation methods. Meditation is very serious and complicated practice to realize full liberation from all the suffering. It is very precious practice, but there are lots of dangers and confusions while practicing meditation. Because the approaches for meditation is very various and less accord among different traditions and teachers. And it is usually related with religion, which also may become the important source of confusion. To pursue full enlightenment, encountering a fully enlightened master who will fit to me is the best way. But encountering reliable master who is fit to me itself is also very difficult. However, if you can follow scientific method, I believe you can practice with more comfortable mind and conviction. Aoma will guide you in this way. I will explain in three chapters. One, what is meditation? It's understandings of meditation. Now you need to clarify, understand what meditation is. There are many misunderstandings about meditation. For example, meditation is just sitting, immersing yourself in something, and concentrating deeply. Or it is a type of religious activity, imagining something, healing method, etc. Of course, these kinds of understanding also explain some aspect of meditation, but not as a whole. Actually, meditation is very closely related with religion also. Representative example is Buddhism. Early Buddhism for Vipassana meditation and Mahayana Buddhism for Zen meditation. So what is meditation? In a word, meditation is awareing here and now as it is. So it is a state in which you continue to notice every moment as it is. I'm going to hear the singing bowl. Please listen carefully. Now when I hit the singing bowl, you might listen the dinging sound and you can know that your awareness is continuing. You were noticing of it at every moment continuously. That is a state of meditation. Maybe for some people it is little bit surprising because it is the original state of your mind. But it is the very essence of meditation. This is not a state that we have learned through our knowledge or acquired with our talent but it is the original state of our mind. So even if you didn't learn anything about meditation in particular, you were already meditating to a certain level. It is the very nature of meditation. Therefore, understanding it is very important for continuing your meditation practice because if you don't understand it clearly, it is very easy to pursue something external object like you study worldly subject. So at first, you have to understand this very nature of meditation clearly. So we can define meditation like this. Meditation is a technique to find awareness here and now all the time. These this so various techniques are developed around the world, such as Vipassana, Zen, and Yoga meditation, etc. And all of them are techniques to bind our awareness on here and now. So to do this well, an effort to keep awareness binded on here and now is required. This effort is called as Abhyasa in yoga school and Sati in early Buddhism. With the help of this effort, your awareness is continuing clearly. And this stage of continuous awareness is called Dhyana, meaning meditation in Sanskrit. Now then, why do we practice meditation? 
There are various purposes for meditating, but let's start with the general purpose first. In general, we practice meditation to maintain an equanimous and aware mind all the time, which is free from afflictions and delusion. There is a more serious purpose, the ultimate goal of meditation. It is to achieve a state which is completely free from all the suffering. Usually, it is called as liberation or enlightenment, moksha in Indian philosophy, kaivalya in yoga, and nirvana in Buddhism, and seeing nature in Chinese Zen, etc. Those who want to practice meditation more seriously, having an interest about the ultimate goal of meditation is important. Because if you don't have that much interest about it, it's quite difficult to, to continue meditation. Now I'll give you an analogy. Now, if you are not uh, thirsty, if, even though I tell you the formula to make water equal H2 plus O, you wouldn't try to manipulate the formula. However, if I gave the formula H2 plus O equal water to the thirsty people, they would run it right away to produce water. It's very similar with it. So if you don't have strong wish for the ultimate goal of meditation, the full liberation from all the suffering, it will be quite difficult to, to continue the meditation practice. Therefore, it is very important to have the strong wish to achieve a state of complete freedom from all the suffering when you want to start serious meditation. Now I am going to explain about the scientific Vipassana meditation method of Aoma. Aoma was influenced from various meditation methods and traditions and teachers around the world. Among them, nine schools of Indian philosophy are most important. So I'll explain about the nine schools of Indian philosophy because all of them are for the meditation. They are roughly divided into two categories, the orthodox six schools and unorthodox three schools. The orthodox six schools are called Astika and the non-orthodox schools are called Nastika. Then what is the standard? There is a spiritual scripture called Veda that is the oldest in the world. If you finally accept Veda as ultimate authority, it is the orthodox schools. But if you don't accept Veda as ultimate authority, they are non-orthodox schools. Orthodox schools are Sankhya, Yoga, Nyaya, Vaisheshika, Mimamsa, Vedanta. Among them, the metaphysics of Sankhya and Yoga are substantial dualism, which accept the spirit and matter as the substances. Nyaya, Vaisheshika are pluralism, which accept the absolute spirit. And Mimamsa and Vedanta are spiritual monism, which accept only spirit as substance. So the classical yoga of Patanjali Yoga follows Sankhyan dualism. And the Hatha Yoga, which started at 10th century AD, follows the spiritual monism of Vedanta. Now let's see the non-orthodox philosophy. The first one is Buddhism. It is quite suspicious that Buddhism belongs to a non-orthodox school, but it is from the position of Indian philosophy. This is because the metaphysical claim of Buddhism is completely different from the other schools of Indian philosophy. The metaphysics of orthodox six schools and Jainism are Atman theory, which accept the absolute spirit as the substance. But the metaphysics of Buddhism is an Atman theory which does not accept the spirit nor material as the substance. It is the metaphysical view that sees everything as unreal. And so if you come to Mahayana Buddhism and Zen Buddhism, it became the theory of emptiness. Jainism accepts absolute spirit called Jiva, but it is a relativistic theory and which school also became the religion afterward. Here too, there is a materialism called Charva, which might be followed by many modern scientists. The process of establishing Aoma's meditation method. As I told, Aoma's meditation method are influenced much from Indian philosophy, especially the four schools written in red color here are important. Sankhya, Yoga, Vedanta, and Buddhism. So those scientific Vipassana meditation formula of Aoma was extracted out through comparative philosophical analysis of seven important meditation scriptures from these four schools. Patanjali Yoga Sutra from Indian Classical Yoga and Hatha Pratika from Indian Hatha Yoga, Gerandha Sanita from Indian Hatha Yoga.
Mahasa Tipatana stuff from only Buddhism, but to stuff from Mahayana Buddhism, diamond stuff from Mahayana Buddhism, and the platform scripture by Hinong, the sixth patriarch from Chinese Zen Buddhism. And what is scientific Vipassana meditation method? It is a meditation technique which can be explained through logical formula and also can be verified through direct sense experience. The most important feature of Aoma is that there is a scientific Vipassana meditation formula. Now I'll explain about the scientific Vipassana meditation formula. Vipassana meditation is the main method of early Buddhism. Vipassana itself is quite logical and scientific. But why is it specifically called scientific? Although the Vipassana is very scientific, but the tradition had become religion and there are many religious beliefs are mixed into the technique. So the work done by Aoma is to exclude all such religious beliefs or mere beliefs as much as possible, which are difficult to verify scientifically. By extracting only the parts that are possible to explain through logic and to verify through sense experience, I established scientific formula. Let's read the formula which have the aspects of theory and practice. If you protect the practicing environment well and aware of the subtle changes in your body and mind without interruption, you will become free from all the suffering. Here, protecting practicing environment well means observing the precepts which is yama niyama in yoga and the five precepts of vipassana. So the meaning of protecting the practicing environment well is to observe the precepts. And it means that not to cause harm to other people around you because if you make them uncomfortable, they like you anymore. And if they don't like you, they may criticize and sometimes even attack you. If it happens, you can't maintain your equanimous mind. But what you want to do by practicing meditation is to observe the more subtle phenomena of the body and mind. And the maintaining basic equanimity in your mind is very important. If you can't maintain basic equanimity, it becomes impossible to practice meditation in that direction. This formula is similar with the Silla, Samadhi, and Panya of Vipassana. I didn't have an intention to make it like this, but occasionally it happens to become quite similar. And when you practice meditation, actually, usually you can use under form for practice. The very moment when you maintain perfect equanimity while protecting the practicing environment well and simultaneously being aware of the types of sensations and changing facts, tremors is the moment when an ember of the enlightenment is ignited. Now the following is the formula and the skill of all the meditation. I'll explain some aspect of it. Like all the scientific experiment, there is the aspect of a formula and skill in Aoma scientific meditation method. Now I'll compare the different aspects of a formula and skill in detail because the many people seem to confuse the difference between formula and skill. And various traditions of Vipassana which have the same formula also teach quite different skills and it also becomes the great source of confusion. For example, when you are trying to concentrate by observing your breathing, some tradition teaches to focus on the, the nostrils, but other tradition teaches to focus on the lower abdomen. Some tradition teaches not to control the breathing, but just natural breathing. But other tradition teaches to practice intentionally slight and fast breathing. And some tradition teaches not to concentrate, but other tradition claims that one has to observe after concentrating very deeply. There are very various skills, but it seems that there is a tendency that one tradition does not recognize the skills of other tradition. Thus, if you learn the skill from a certain tradition and then move to a new tradition, then you will have to learn new skill from the beginning again. I think it is a very confusing and difficult process for those who start meditation first. I also went through all of those processes. So now you have to be very clear about the formula and skill aspect. One, the formula is absolute, but skills are flexible. Two, in formula, there is true and false, but in skill, there is no true and false, but only good and bad, or suitable and less suitable. Three, the formula is unique, only one, so it cannot be modified. 
but the skill has many possibility for modification. Four, it is difficult to, to discover new formula. It is very difficult to find a new formula because creating a new formula means the changing of the era itself and so the paradigm is changed. But in the case of a skill, I think it is necessary to develop a new one continuously. The skill that was used until yesterday now can be discarded today. From now on, new skill may be adopted. And after using that skill for some time, and again, new skill would be emerged. And in this way, the skill is likely to continue to be developed. Why? But the formula has 100% repeatability and reproducibility. Only when it is reproducible, it can be said to be a formula. But the skill can have different effects depending on the different situations. So each person has to apply the skill that is proper for them at that moment. Six, formula should be applied equally to everyone. But most appropriate skill should be applied to each individual separately. So you don't need best skill in the world, but you need to find a skill that's appropriate for you. Now I'll explain the types of a meditation technique. Meditation technique can be broadly classified into two. One is life meditation and the other is professional meditation. Life meditation literally means being aware of every moment in your life. It is a meditation method that helps you to live a more stable life by maintaining equanimous and aware mind all the time. But as I told before, there is more serious meditation to reach the ultimate goal of life, to achieve full enlightenment nirvana, a state of complete freedom from all the suffering. So there is a specialized meditation method to achieve that goal. Although the two seems to be similar, but quite different. Let me explain with an analogy. If we try to observe our palm with the naked eye and it was observed after magnifying it 100 times to 10,000 times with a microscope, the result would be very different. This is similar with that. Living meditation is a method of not using special tool, but professional meditation uses a, a special tool like the microscope. It can use a meditation method that creates a highly concentrated state of mind as if observing after magnifying it 100 times to 10,000 times. So the meditation method discussed in Aoma is mainly the professional meditation method. But I think professional meditation also can be broadly divided into two or three categories. One, the meditation method for protected environment. This is the technique which can achieve good result in the isolated environment from the society like meditation center. Mahashi Vipassana, Goenka Vipassana, and Pao Vipassana, etc. are the examples. In my experience, when I was practicing in the meditation center, I could experience a deep effect of meditation. However, after coming out into normal society, it is difficult to continue. This is my personal experience, and it was really difficult. So I was wording it for 30 years, and recent realization is that this is a meditation method that can achieve good results only when it is practiced in a protected environment. In other words, only when I can maintain perfect silence, so inside the protected environment, it is easy to continue my practice. But after coming back home and normal society, it is difficult to, to keep this kind of a meditation skill. Among Samatha and Vipassana, Samatha is more difficult skill to maintain in the society because it is a technique to fix on the small point. I am not saying this meditation skill is not good at all. But speaking about the environment, in the normal society and home, it's quite difficult to use this kind of meditation skill of quietly focusing on the one point because I have to meet the various people, I have to do economic activity, and I have to take care of many things and listen to many things. And so it is quite difficult to, to practice this kind of concentration skill while taking care of many things. Of course, Samatha technique may be helpful to observe the deep and subtle phenomena of our body and mind, but it is difficult to technique to maintain in the environment of normal society.
who had a deep experience of meditation while in the meditation center may have a lot of trouble with this because it is difficult to, to experience deep meditation outside the center. So he may be worrying that where and when should I go to the meditation center next? How many days and months should I spend in the center next time? Because of that, it is also difficult to adjust to normal society. I'm not talking about other people, but talking about my own experience. Meditation method for normal society. Thus, I was contemplating about it because my situation is not comfortable to go to a meditation center often and to spend more than a week. So I thought that I needed to find a method that would give me some level of meditation experience while living in a life in normal society. And then something that caught my eye was Indian Hatha Yoga, which I learned in 1996. I was undertaking the teacher training course Indian Hatha Yoga in the Kaibaladam Yoga College the first scientific yoga institute in the world. Indian Hatha Yoga is not a technique for Samatha as taught in Vipassana, but rather a relaxation technique, because this is a skill to relax the congestions in the abdomen, head, and chest, which can be helpful to observe subtler sensations of body and mind. And I was practicing and teaching Indian Hatha Yoga techniques like Asana, Bandham, and Mudra, Kumbhaka, and Suti, Kriyas, etc., quite seriously, nearly about 25 years since 1997 to 2022. At the moment, I don't teach or practice Indian Hatha Yoga very seriously except some skills because I was feeling that these techniques are not easy skill to learn and practice for the busy, ordinary people in modern society. I need easier, simpler, and more interesting skill which can be practiced immediately without learning. So at the moment, I'm experimenting so-called music AI meditation, which is a skill to make use of modern music and various sounds. I believe that the principle of music AI meditation and Indian Hatha Yoga is almost the same. It is the complete relaxation of body and mind. Indian Hatha Yoga helps to relax through various skills like asana, breathing techniques, and cleansing processes, etc., but music AI meditation helps to relax through resonance with sound vibration of various musics. Actually, this is the perfectly same principle with mantra yoga or nada yoga. At the moment, I am focusing on this skill because applying area of music AI meditation is much more wide. And the strong points of it are, it is the skill which can practice immediately without learning, and it can touch the deepest level of human mind through moving. Three, the integrated meditation method, two-hour sitting meditation. Sulun Sayadaw's two-hour sitting meditation. From December 2017 to January 2018, I visited the Sulun Vipassana Center in Myanmar founded by Sulun Sayadaw for about one month. He was fully enlightened Arahan in the 20th century. He passed away at 1952. But he, his body was very well preserved as a mummy because he told disciples to preserve their body without burning because his body was fully purified and so it will not be decayed. Thus, I visited there and touched the mummy by myself and made the photos. At 2017, I've learned the technique from Uwara Sayado the third generation teacher from Sulun Sayado, who was also passed away on 2021. I went there and learned two hours sitting meditation without moving at all and brought it with me. I had realized that it is the method for me. It is a sitting meditation method for two hours without moving. Practice Samatha for an hour and practice Vipassana for an hour continuously. At first, concentrate below the nostrils with a shallow and fast breathing for Samatha meditation. It's similar to Kapalavati in Indian Hatha Yoga, but Kapalavati is not for Samatha, but it's the skill for circulating blood throughout the whole body. But Sulun breathing is a Samatha skill to concentrate with shallow and fast breathing, to focus on the area below the nostrils. Then start the Vipassana with observing the bodily sensations for an hour. I have to try to absorb the most painful sensations as the main object. Like this, sitting still and absorb them for two hours without moving at all. In the beginning of learning this technique, it was very difficult because I had to face the most painful sensations for two hours without moving at all. 
But after learning it, I felt that it is the skill for me because this skill can give good results even in normal society. I will be able to get better effect than the skills of a monastic techniques because I can develop the wisdom and strength of observing most painful sensations equanimously. So I gave up all the other skills and accepted and practicing it since 2017. Also teaching to our students and received a good response. But in Aoma, there is a need to modify the original skill of Sulun Sayado's two-hour sitting meditation method. Because the main environment Aoma is through Zoom only, and the most meditators are beginners. So I don't teach you the Samatha skill of Sulun breathing, but to teach you the modified skill to practice Samatha and Vipassana simultaneously for the students. Because it seems difficult to adjust to this two-hour sitting meditation itself for the beginners, and the Vipassana is the most important skill to practice. I feel that practicing Vipassana and Samatha simultaneously would be more effective and practical for the common people in the normal society. Because only when you are practicing this technique in this way, you will be able to continue your practice in an easier way and you will be able to apply it into the actual difficult situations in daily life. If you want to understand Aoma's two-hour sitting meditation, the best way is to attend 5 to 7 a.m. early morning meditation program conducted through Zoom. We are providing one day open class for the beginners who want to experience it. I'll prepare more detailed explanation about this two-hour sitting meditation of Aoma in two separate video because this is the most important skill of Aoma Meditation Center. If you want to attend this two-hour sitting meditation, please apply in the comments of this video or make a reservation through my personal contact. And try the 15 minutes guided meditation in English in this channel before attending the open class. And if you will be able to practice this two-hour sitting meditation skill, at first, you must understand the principle of cessating suffering and also, I'll upload it in separate video. Please watch this video first before attempting the meditation technique. Summary. Today, I talked about the important theories and techniques of a serious meditation to realize full liberation in three chapters. In chapter one, I explained general aspects of meditation. In chapter two, I explained the process of extracting the scientific Vipassana meditation formula difference between formula and skill, and also about the different meditation methods in the world. In chapter three, I explain the difference between the two-hour sitting meditation skills of Sulun Sayado and Aoma, and also gave a practical instruction to start the two-hour sitting meditation skill of Aoma. Therefore, we can conclude that Aoma's meditation method, which consisted in the scientific Vipassana formula and the two-hour sitting meditation skill, is one of the easiest and quickest meditation method for the ordinary people in the normal society to pursue full enlightenment from all the suffering. So if you have questions and expectations, please write them in the comments. And if you give like and notification settings, it will be helpful to make next video. This was Jay Chang Kim, a meditation teacher who will guide you with the scientific Vipassana meditation method. Thank you.